What's up everybody? So it's time for another guide and I'm going with Hamburg. And now that I've made myself a little hungry looking at the thumbnail, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Now as far as these dates go here, it's all pretty standard from what you'll normally see on my channel. I have the privilege here that gives me the frequent Pope Miles, and I'm going to go ahead and take that because of course I am. And then Development of Temples, because you will be playing Tall, Religious Diplomats, because, of course, it does make your life just, in general, easier. And then you have all the Monarch Point Generators, Loyalty Generators, and then lastly, I'm going to give Patronage of the Arts. The one thing that is different from what you'll normally see in my channel is that I'm not taking the Burger Financial Demand. This extra tax modifier is huge for virtually every country at the start of the game. The thing is, it's not worth it for Hamburg. Simply because, while I would love to have the construction cost button, I'd love to have the extra tax income, I'm also going to be a 30 development city very quickly, as well as have a lot of trade income, which means both of those things give you extra burger influence, which will make you have disasters. So instead of dealing with disasters, just don't give this privilege. It's not worth it. Now, as far as the army is concerned, that's going to be left alone. We're going to take the navy here, and we're going to send them out to protect trade. Now that that's done, we're just going to go ahead and find our allies. The first one we're going to always pick up is going to be Lubeck. They're a historical friend. They're always going to be an option available to you. And then we're going to look around and see who else nearby is going to be viable as a good ally. Now, as far as the rivals we have, it can kind of vary. It can start off with Brandenburg rivaling you at the largest end, and then all these other OPMs over here rivaling you as well. It looks like Verden is a rival, so is Sass Lomburg and East Frisia, which is perfectly fine. I have no problem fighting any of those guys, really. Let's go ahead and just send an insult to Verden. This will make Bremen like me, which they're also a historical friend. They're going to like me no matter what. Wait a day. And then I can ally Lunaberg, which is at least another person that's next to me to help me fight people like Verden. And then we're going to pick up the other ally that we can find, which is probably going to be Munster or Brunswick. It looks like Brunswick is still an option. Looks like Hess is going to be another person to a scornfully insult, just to pick them up quickly. There we go. And then I have one more slot left. I can't pick up Munster because they are rivaled to each other. So instead, I'll pick up either Bremen or Oldenburg. It looks like Bremen's probably going to be my most viable option. So I'll go ahead and go with them, because I'm not able to attack them directly anyway. So hopefully they'll find other allies they can pick off, but it looks like they picked Lubeck, which is fine, because I'll eventually be attacking Lubeck anyway. Now that that's done, let's get ready for the inevitable. We'll hire the free company, because we are going to be picking somebody to snipe pretty quickly. And who our rivals are going to be is going to depend entirely on who doesn't get an ally. And that we won't find out until a second. So give me one second. Let me wait till about December. Looks like Verden is not and East Frisia is not. So let's pick both of them. Because if I can pick them as both as options, they might still fail to get an ally in time. Which means I can walk in and pull off a show strength. It looks like he picked up Stettin, which is perfectly fine. I'll go and deal with East Frisia later. But now I can walk over, get this occupation, use the free company as the frontal troop so I don't take any actual damage, and then win this without any real difficulty. So give me one second, because I do actually have to wait until this war is done, and that can take a little bit. So I'll see you guys in a little bit, and I just realized I never looked at my... That's actually pretty good. I like this. I like this guy. He's not that old. He has some decent stat distribution and aggressive expansion impact is always nice. Though, definitely not needed, surprisingly enough. But I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back. As you can see, it's now over. I just wanted to point out very briefly, it used to be that you actually had to humiliate a rival to get this. So you couldn't come in here and do a show strength. You had to do the humiliate. Well, they fixed that, so now you can do a show strength, and you'll still get the Splendor bonus. Just wanted to point that out in case anybody hasn't caught on to that fact yet, because, yeah, I'd always rather do a show strength if I can actually get away with it, and Hamburg, given their position, can do it really easily. 
As you saw before though, I am building up a spy network to attack Dith Martian and Oldenburg. Oldenburg, it's not likely to actually matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back on you. However, I will build a spy network on you. And I do have my maintenance down just because I don't actually need to be paying for my troops while I'm sitting around waiting for spy networks so I can get claims. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again while I get these claims down, and then I will start declaring and taking people out. See you guys again when I have something actually to talk about. And welcome back. So as you can see, war is over. I have a Stettin here is co-belligerated, and I am going to full annex them, even though I don't have any claims or anything over there. And you'll see why in a second. While I am a free city, that means I can't go above one province only is calculated at the monthly tick. Meaning I can integrate, annex these guys and then release them back into the world. And I'm still a free city. So I have Stettin over here as a vassal and I also have East Frisia over here as a vassal. And that means I can go in and pick up strong duchies. And time to look at the next guy who is going to be Dith's Martian, who should still only be allied to Oldenburg, which means move these guys up and I should have an army maintained. I don't think I dropped the maintenance. Nope, I didn't drop the maintenance. Move them up, and I'll be able to walk around and smack them too. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare this as well. And Oldenburg, I can't co-belligerate in this one, but don't really have to. Move in, wipe these guys out, leave one guy here to maintain it so they can't actually recruit anybody, and then walk over to Oldenburg, take them out too. Give me one second while I set all that up. You walk over to there. So do you. And then I need access through you again. Yeah, I know you're willing to come in, but don't need you to. Because I'd have to promise you land, and I have no interest in giving you any. Once I wipe them out over on this fort, I can just walk back over and then move my troops around so I can actually occupy them as necessary. Now, because these are one province miners, I will tell you now, they have a nasty habit of unconditionally surrendering if you take the war leader first. So operate with this, in this pattern, siege down the non-war leader, and then focus on the war leader. Otherwise, you'll get a unconditional surrender way before you're ready to take everything that you want. So with that being said, I'm just waiting for these guys to fall, and then I can take care of them and move on to my next little targets. But first things first, let's get these guys improved. As far as Stettin is concerned, don't need to worry about him. I'll take care of him later, but I'm not going to integrate him. I will be integrating East Frisia and these guys first though. But I'll see you guys a little bit. And welcome back everybody. So as you can see, they are slightly disloyal. Here's the thing though, because I have all of their force limit, I can still hire a lot more troops. And I'm going to be chilling for quite a bit, so they can just sit here and not really be a problem. And of course, while I would love to sit here and forever be a free city, it's not going to happen. You are going to be limited in how much of vassals you can really maintain being just a free city. So instead of trying to do that, I definitely plan on moving past free city status as quickly as you can. I did end up bumping up my development here to 32. I'm not going to push it any further in order to speed up Renaissance because it's a waste of points. Though I did end up uh, expanding infrastructure here twice just to make it slightly cheaper. And of course I turned on encourage development and now I can just put it to protect trade to make certain I'm making as much money as I possibly can. For now though, I'm gonna pause the recording because it's just waiting until I can integrate this guy. And then again, Stettin I'm gonna leave alone, but the other two I just took, I'll integrate them. And then I'm gonna start moving on towards people like Verden and people like Sox Lomberg and eventually Denmark. So I will see you guys once I'm at that point. And welcome back. So as you can see, I'm no longer a free city. In fact, I'm making a lot less money because my forest limit went down because I have a lot more land to myself now. Which, yeah, 
I can live with that. I'm going to state all this up, and I'm going after Verden, and I'm going to go after you and you at the same time. I should be able to manage this without any real problems, but just in case, let's go ahead and go. So I'm going after you. In fact, let's go after you first. And let's bring you up as well to replace the losses. Let's, there's that. Now, split off, split off. Okay, well, if they end up taking land as well, I don't really mind. I just need to be able to actually defend myself from Sweden when they come in and deal with Wolgas, because usually Wolgas is going to be a little bit annoying when I do this but it'll be fine. So basically all I'm doing at this point is just trying to keep Sweden from attacking me and stack wiping me because the Lord knows they'll come in like they are and that means I have to be paying attention. So let's move you there and let's have you back off I think. Yeah. Oh no, they didn't make it out in time. Just need to make sure I don't get stack wiped. There we go. And now they'll be a problem, but we do outnumber them elsewhere. So this is going to be a long war, a long annoying war. So I'm not going to make you sit all the way through it, but basically I will bring you guys back when it is over, because, yeah, this is going to kind of suck with Sweden, because Sweden can be dangerous. But see you guys soon. And welcome back. So, yeah, Sweden was kind of annoying, but they did help me thin out my numbers, so at least I'm not over force limit. As far as Wolgas is concerned, I'm just going to full annex him, take all of his money, and yeah, I know, it's still 51 points, and I did not co him. Wait, no, I did. Never mind. So, not too bad. And I will get that land situated in a second. We need to piece out this as well. In fact, I could hand this back to Denmark, but no. No, Denmark, you're kind of on your own. And then I'm going to release Verden, and I'm going to release Wolgast. Now, if Stuttgart, uh, Stetton here does have to give it up, they'll give it back to my vassal. And if they don't, he'll end up coring it, and I don't care what he does. But, just gotta keep these guys loyal, and that shouldn't be too difficult. Need to find them, there we go. Throw him some development. Verden, you're close enough, and Wolgast, you're, again, close enough. Let's just improve relations with them, and wait. I will be integrating Verden, but these two I'm going to be holding on to for a little bit. I need to get over to them, and then I can actually take advantage of some mechanics to make it easier to integrate them. But for now, I'm going to simply just focus on Verden, and then I need to go after Mecklenburg, which I'll be going after when I take out Denmark. But I'll see you guys when it's time to do that. And welcome back. So, War with Denmark is over. I made them spit out Holstein. I wasn't able to, due to coalition problems, to take it, the land myself. I also made Lubeck spit out Sas Lomberg. I'll go after both of these countries later and just make sure I get their land as well. And I did take Mecklenburg. I full conquered them, and then because I have unlawful demands, or unlawful territory demands, I release them back into the world. I'm going to integrate Verden, and then I'm going to worry about getting Mecklenburg integrated. And then I can move on, because then I'll actually be able to make decisions about what I'm doing at this point. All of this has been going on with a pending decision that I need to make. Specifically, am I going to the east, or am I going to the west? So, let me go ahead and get to that point, and I can explain the decisions that you're going to have to make in your game on which direction you're going to want to go. See you soon. What's up, everybody? So, I'm giving away a CD key for The Outer Worlds this week. So, if you want a copy of this game, just comment below The Outer Worlds. You can have it in another comment as well, just so it's clear that you're actually trying to get the CD key. At the end of the week, I'll go through the comments, and I'll pick one at random that actually commented that and I'll reply to that comment with the CD key. Obviously, other people can absolutely go in and take it from you, so be sure you're paying attention to your notifications. Other than that, let's get back to the guide. And welcome back. 
So in the meantime, I have attacked uh, Holstein. They are now a vassal. Sax Lomberg was willing to become one voluntarily, so I took them out. And uh, Mecklenburg has been integrated, and I've been deving their land. The reason why is I culture shifted over to Pomeranian, and because I have this territory over here, I can form Pomerania. And if you look at this button, this is one of the few times you'll actually see it do this. When you form Pomerania, you inherit Wolgast and Stettin, so you don't have to pay for any coring. Now before you do go, make sure you're able to get through these missions, because you will lose this mission tree. So I'm going to go ahead and just hire these two guys real quick. It looks like they're, it's going to be pretty quick, because it's going to come out of Hamburg, both of them. And... I can probably go through pretty far, actually. I mean, it won't go through very far, but it'll at least get these two. And I could go through here to get a CB to... Oh, looks like he's... Really? Huh. So it looks like... Oh. I wonder why. Either way, this mission will usually... Usually... Give a subjugation CB on Scotland. Why it didn't, don't know. But it doesn't really matter because permanent claims are about as effective anyway. Either way, I am now able to have a permanent CB up all year on Gotland, and I can go after them later. But the rest of this mission tree is not really worth going down. You can choose to go down it if you really want to, but I personally would rather form Pomerania. And then I get to make the choice do I want to go west? Or do I want to go east? The reason why is going west, I can form the Netherlands and go colonial. If I go east, on the other hand, I can form Prussia. Usually, I'm going to be going east. Simply because, now that I am here, it is time for me to start expanding and then really getting the quality level up, as opposed to going colonial later on, and trying to go a... still playing tall, but playing tall without combat side of it. So I usually go to the east, but you can go in either direction you want. Just be aware you're going to try and get Austria to ally you. It looks like he's actually very close with me. The reason why is that you have to go down, and you, before you form either of those two tags, you do need to be an elector. So by having them being an ally, you can move down, vassalize Cologne, get the electorship, and then you can form one of those tags. In this game, however, I'm going to go ahead and just move on and get them allied and get moving in that direction. It looks like, yeah, I'm going to have to pick one of you two to get rid of, and I'm pretty sure I'm going with you, Brunswick. So, goodbye. And hello, Austria. I'm glad we can be friends. Come on. Right there. There we go. Now that I am friends with the Emperor, I can end up getting the electorship transferred over to me. I just need to get to Cologne and vassalize him. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving in that direction, but I'll see you guys soon. And welcome back. So I just got done with the war against Poland. What basically happened is, is Brandenburg decided they were going to break their alliance with me after I had broken it with uh, Brunswick, so I attacked Brunswick anyway. And then Brandenburg allied Poland. Well, then the Ottomans attacked Poland and just started steamrolling them hard. The moment Poland wouldn't come in, I attacked Brandenburg, and then before I could turn and then go attack after Poland, because now I have a Teutonic Order vassal over here who has a bunch of cores I'd like to get back, Muscovy, my other ally, called me in against Poland and just steamrolled them the other way. So yeah, Poland is not having a fun time. Unfortunately, that means I need to sit back and wait before I can do anything, but it does mean I can look at other options, like potentially picking Gotland up as a vassal diplomatically. But, just going to have to wait until I can actually do something, so I'm going to keep going. I am looking at Cologne still for being the person I attacked to steal the electorship from. While Brandenburg is something that exists, he is larger there's going to be more war score there in total, which means it's going to cost me a lot more aggressive expansion to do it. Whereas Cologne, it's going to be about half as much, and the Elector is still just as valuable. It doesn't really change. 
And just in case anybody needs to find good ideas to go with this, innovative influence quality is a good idea set combination because the idea set gives you diplomatic annexation cost, infantry combat ability, and aggressive expansion impact and advisor cost reduction. Always nice things to have. Cheap advisors and aggressive expansion reduction in the HRE is very, very nice. But I'm going to go ahead and keep moving on so I can show you the next little stages. But realistically, it's just simply consolidating in northern Germany and consolidating in Prussia. Or in the alternative, you're pushing the other direction and you're consolidating in the lowlands. Or both. It's up to you. With that being said, I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back. So I decided I kind of had to have a new thumbnail, even though it's not going to be a new video. But as you can see, I did end up getting the electorate. I got it through Cologne. I did attack uh, Brandenburg over here and take back the Teutonic Order because they still had cores over here so they could reconquer all of this out of the Commonwealth, which I just got done doing. In the middle of all that, the Ottomans decided to attack Hungary, but fortunately, they have not gotten anywhere near me so far. Which, you know, very good thing. I'm glad I avoided that. I have just barely got Austria up to 200, and I had to influence them, which you might not be able to do. But it's either that, or you have to get the 6,000 ducats together to buy the electorate, and that's generally not overly worth it. But now... If I do form Prussia, I'm not going to get kicked out of the HRE. If I form the Netherlands, I'm not going to get kicked out of the HRE. So, hey, good news. Now, I am going to integrate the Teutonic Order once I have the opportunity to, because I need to get rid of them. And now that I am actually an elector, I can look at flipping my religion, which, yes, I absolutely want to do, because to form Prussia, can't be Catholic, so need to do that. Now, I did just pick up Rupin. I'm going to be going back after Brandenburg, annexing them entirely instead of trying to just pull them apart or make them into a vassal because, yeah, they don't like me. Everything else is just, you're going to be weakening the Commonwealth, eating through Germany, though do check to see if there are people that are just willing to become vassals because you might find some of them are willing to, and that way you don't have to actually find anybody, get aggressive expansion, deal with coalitions, if they're willing to just become a subject, great. Other than that, use your advantage in the HRE and just carve out a little area of Germany, carve out the Commonwealth, because they are not going to be able to stop you, especially if you can pick up a Muscovy or a Russia ally, and then Austria as well, because everybody should like you. You have been going from a one-province minor to a larger power, they would have largely ignored you, and as long as you're not fighting up coalitions, you should be fine. Now, if you recall, in the Hamburg mission tree, there is a subjugation or claims on Scotland. If you want to go down that route, you absolutely can. That really is your call. I do not like going to Scotland, because usually by this time they would have been taken out by England, and while it is nice having a toehold in England already, it's usually not worth it, because you're going to be fight, fo focusing so much over here. Also fighting in the British Isles means you're going to be moving your troops around a lot, and as you can see, sometimes they just pick up allies you don't want to be dealing with with your army in the British Isles. So, your call, and it's going to depend on how your game is going. My game, Scotland is fairly stable, so they don't have much to worry about, but obviously I'm going to eventually want to take them out. As far as Norway is concerned, yeah, as you can see here, they are probably getting to the point where you can just attack them and vassalize them. Yeah, yeah, they are. So, rushing up here, taking Norway, reconquering their land, and using that as a way in is also an option. Uh, Denmark, you're going to want to take out Denmark and Sweden if you can, but it's really just to take control of Jalen. It's just you're going to want that naval combat off your own coast as well as uh, the extra naval tradition. Naval tradition, because that will improve your navy fighting and that'll make it so you can beat the English navy whenever you want to or need to, even when you're ending up as Germany. Sorry, I need to remember what I was going to say. Oh, I, I also pointed out, kind of, 
don't change religion until you're after you're an elector to make sure Austria doesn't get mad at you. But also until you are done with the rapid expansion that you need to be doing. Fighting into another religion will always increase your aggressive expansion, at least with that specific religion. So me attacking the Catholics will make all the other Catholics matter than if I attack Protestants. Now, since Munster is Catholic, I obviously don't want to be doing that as a Protestant. So once it starts to spread significantly, that's when you flip. But at a minimum, it is after you take over the electorship so you can actually have it. And then you can upgrade, you can form tags, you can do all the things you need to do without having to constantly fight into the HRE. Because you don't want to have to constantly attack Austria to expand in Germany at all. Otherwise, simply just follow through your mission tree. If you actually look through here, you'll find that you have missions that give you claims on or require you to attack. Basically, everybody I've already attacked. So Brandenburg, go after Poland. And once you have that, you're going after the Teutonic Order. And then on the other side of it, you're going after uh, Lübeck. Then you're going after the rest of Lower Saxony. And then you're going to have a bunch of claims on... Denmark and into Scandinavia, allowing you to have a, a decent foothold in everything around you. And then whether or not you form the Netherlands and you're pulling trade hard this direction as well, or you're the Prussians and you're also dealing with the trade, but also your extremely high quality troops, you can play however you really want at that point. You can even choose to go Protestant or stay Catholic and fight the League War and try and take the HRE over from Austria because in some games, like mine right now, I'm stronger than him. By far. His only real advantage is that I'm his ally right now. And I have, well, massive trust with him. So, pick how you want to play, go in that direction. Like, in this game, I massively went more towards Prussia. But you can go to the west and go with the Netherlands. I would still recommend forming Pomerania, though, just because being able to instantly inherit anything that is primary Pomeranian culture, that is Mecklenburg, Wolgast, Rügen, and Stetten. All of these tags can be instantly inherited if you are primary Pomeranian culture, which means you just need to grab one Pomeranian province, dev it significantly, and you can flip over. So if you need to do that with Rügen over here, do it. It is really worth it to just instantly inherit it, and it gives you all the claims that you need to go everywhere else you might want to go. And it doesn't stop you from forming Prussia. Prussia you can form if you form any other tag. And really, the other options that you have in forming smaller tags in Germany, like uh, like Hanover, they just don't offer you the same options that Pomerania does of instantly inheriting vassals, so you don't have to worry about their opinion. So you can just integrate everybody else, make them really mad at you, and still just inherit it. While at the same time, you have decent ideas, not great ideas, but decent ideas, to being able to finish off whatever you're trying to form. So, pick whatever you want, and roll with it, because you're in a great position as Hamburg to play however you want. With all that being said, though, I do want to talk about one last thing, and that is the achievement that you get for Hamburg, which is just basically trading in both cow and diamond, or gems. Because of your position, there are plenty of livestock in the area, so you don't really need to worry about that being produced. You need to be able to trade in gems, and that's over here in the Teutonic Order. By going in this direction and building up those provinces, building the manufactories, and controlling the trade in this region, you'll be able to, if you dominate the Lubeck node, you'll be able to get that achievement very easily. It really just comes down to, are you controlling enough of the overall global production? And by heavily developing these two provinces, you'll get the gems, and then you have plenty of livestock running around here, or you shouldn't have a problem getting that as well. But I hope that helps you guys get those achievement, that achievement, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun as Hamburg, because I always do. But thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.